Hey, what's up, YouTubers? If you think it might be time to up your audio game to make a slick sounding moto vlog or action video, then I've got tips about mics, post production, voiceovers, royalty free music, and more to give you and your audience ear hole pleasure throughout your video. So stay tuned. <laughs> Alright ladies and gentle tubers, let's get right into this one and see if we can do one of these video tips in less than 10 minutes. Uh, thank you so much for sticking with me through the other ones, they've been huge and that actually has been really bad for my channel and I'll tell you why in another video about SEO or search engine optimization. Basically YouTube's rankings are all about audience retention and minutes watched and that kind of stuff these days, so making long videos like this and the previous videos that I've done in the playlist are terrible unless people stick around for the whole thing. So I'm making some sacrifices to give you all these tips. So I know it might sound kind of lame, but if you stick around for the whole thing, even if you just let the video go while you go make a sandwich or something, then my channel won't get smashed for trying to deliver really detailed and sometimes boring tips to my moto vlogging buddies. Uh, and once again, if you haven't already, please check out the playlist that this video is a part of. It's a video series on the top 15 tips for moto vloggers. And we go over technical tips like audio on this video, the last one about was about video tips, and the ones after this one will pretty much all be about growing a huge YouTube audience and having great SEO, which, yeah, that's what you want. Anyway, in the best guided meditation voice I can muster, let's begin. I've heard from a few different moto vloggers and from a lot of other sources that nothing makes a person lose interest in your video quicker than poor audio. For me, this definitely holds true. If the audio is bad, I have a really hard time sticking around. For moto vloggers, this is especially important because we're battling with so much. We've got like exhaust noises, wind noise, heavy breathing, shouting obscenities at, at traffic in road rage induced diatribes. Seriously, getting good audio as a moto vlogger involves like black magic and soul selling and like spastic dances around a diagonally slanted Jamaican totem pole. Um, for those of you who've been to Jamaica, you get that joke. Back on topic, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so I have an audio setup video and you can get to that by clicking here or checking the description if you're on a tablet or a phone, it shows what I went through with all of my cheap mics and setups and tests before finally going for the tried and true method that works. But just a warning, if you stick around through that video, please don't judge me. Um, I already know I'm a moron, and that's even when I my bright yellow helmeted head isn't hanging out of a car window and barking at elderly bikers. The short of it, I use an Audio-Technica ATR3350 tucked inside of a foam pad which is velcroed inside my helmet but away from the shell of the helmet, that's key. Uh, that mic is what a lot of other moto vloggers use, including, once again, Ride Victoria and Accidental Broadcast. So it's a good choice, and it's pretty cheap. It's not $3 China mic cheap, but it's I got mine for about $20 on Amazon, and once again, I'll toss a link in the description. The downside to this mic is that it's powered, so it requires a battery, which runs out, and it has an on-off switch, which if you leave it on, it drains your battery, and if you forget to turn it on when you're out vlogging, you will have no audio, which is a huge bummer, and it has happened, but if you just kind of do your pre-flight checklist, wipe off your lens, make sure everything's connected, you're not gonna leave it off. What you will always have a problem with, though, is that um, the mic does have to be in your helmet. You're going to get wind noise through the actual helmet, not from wind hitting the mic, but from wind hitting the helmet and even your chest and then making noise in the mic. Uh, this is a good reason why I Velcroed the foam pad right at the front of my helmet so it almost makes a bridge inside my chin bar and it's a, it's slightly back and away from the shell inside that foam uh, and that way the mic doesn't pick up the wind hitting the outside of the helmet. Uh, it, it might be right up next to my mouth but I find the foam is a pretty good pop filter too. Uh, another inherent problem is that when you yell loudly, which sometimes occurs during moto vlogs, the audio is going to peak out and sound awful with all kinds of distortion. You have to fix that in post if you're going to keep that audio. Uh, it's also going to pick up your heavy breathing and stuff like that, but, however, the ATR3350 Audio-Technica is, is the best on the market so far for the money. Um, if you pat it right with some dead cat, which is another word for fuzzy hair stuff that blocks wind noise, or better yet, an actual redhead from accidentalbroadcast.com, link in the description, 
uh, that is specifically meant for small mics, then wind noise should not be a problem, even inside your helmet and next to your mouth. Now think about the type of riding that you'll be doing. Are you going to be riding in high speed? You'll need lots of dead cat. If, you need, if you're going to be low speed in the dirt, then you should be okay with a bit of foam pad, which is what I do. Uh, now I've heard people ask me a lot how to clean up audio in post-production. And although I do it sometimes for voiceovers like this one, I would rather get the audio right the first time when you're out there doing the vlog. Honestly, it's time and money well spent to get Dead Cat and a mic that actually works for the riding you plan on doing instead of buying dozens of cheap mics and trying to fix all the audio problems in post. Think about it this way, if you make $10 an hour at your job, meaning that your labor and time is worth 10 bucks an hour, it would take about two hours of post-production work to get your audio right, um, that's 20 bucks. That's the same price as the mic on Amazon. Um, and only a bit more to buy a decent dead cat. So if you're really poor and on the verge of losing your job like I am, then you can cut out a bit of foam from your son's mattress, or you can get more professional stuff from Accidental Broadcast, whatever. Now, if you're gonna clean it up in post anyway because you're a perfectionist or you had a really awesome topic and really great footage, but your audio came out less than perfect for some reason, then you can definitely fix it in post. Um, now, I'm sorry guys, but for the sake of time, I can't really do a huge audio cleaning tutorial, but there are a bazillion of those out there on YouTube. If you have the Adobe Suite, you can use Audition or Soundbooth, and if you're on the brink of poverty like me, you can use a fantastic free program called Audacity. That's A-U-D-A-C-I-T-Y. I'll put a link to that program in the description as well. And that is quite a powerful open source program, and there are literally thousands of videos on how to use it. But if, if you want to go the fix your audio in post route instead of the buy a bit of a cheap equipment that works the first time around route, then Audacity could be a winner. Um, even then, some of the audio cleaning effects on Audacity and even in the professional stuff like Adobe Audition can make your vlog sound worse. I know, it's crazy. And it makes it even harder to fix. Uh, likely, if you have a crackle, you're going to have to edit out each crackle. And the odds of that crackle happening while you're actually speaking are going to be high. So seriously, forget audio, editing audio and post. Just go buy the decent mic and some kind of windscreen. Uh, keep in mind that you're moto vlogging, not shooting the next Scorsese film. Sure, it should sound the best as it can, but once again, with all the wind noise, exhaust noise, heavy breathing, and so forth, you're just going to have to do the best you can with the tools you've got. And so far, the best thing for the money, once again, Audio Technica ATR 3350. So when you get your video home and you load it into your video editor, make sure to check the levels on the audio. These are the little, your levels are the little things that kind of bounce around as you make noises, right? And if they turn red, that means they're peeking out. It shows you that it's too loud and it's gonna sound bad, okay? Um, it's gonna make people's speakers crackle. Heaven forbid they're watching it with headphones. It's gonna make that sound awful. Another thing is to reduce crackle, make sure to check your connectors and stuff when you're riding, wipe your lens off, you know, just do kind of the standard checklist of things to make sure that you're not screwing something up when you're delivering your oratory moto vlog, okay? We all know it doesn't take too many crackles to send your audience for that X button in the corner of the browser. You know, just like a big June bug can ruin your viewer's video experience, even a slight crackle can ruin the audio experience. So check those connectors, make sure they're firm and fitting and all that stuff. Now, on to music. If you plan to monetize your videos, which means making money from showing ads on the videos, then you cannot use other people's music unless it is explicitly royalty free with a written license. So no matter what you do, don't use licensed music for your intro worst idea ever because every single video will be tagged and you can't monetize. Don't even mu use music that sounds like other people's music and don't even think about using covers either. Uh, if you do, get ready to have your videos blocked, have ads play that aren't your own, be blocked on mobile devices, be blocked in other countries, and sometimes get downright shut down your whole channel. Uh, besides that, here's a big thing. Once YouTube sees you upload a video with a track that's not your own, whether you tried to monetize the video or not, they swoop down like the freaking NSA or TSA or freaking uh, like BSA, and they will be monitoring every one of your uploads for content that might or might not be yours. 
and it doesn't stop at the music. They will nail you for every image, every second long sound bite, everything that looks or sounds like anything else. And even if you have the faintest hint of music in the background, or even if you hum three seconds of some obscure tribal song known only to the native Amazonians, they could reject your video. This is a huge pain because even if the content is 100% yours, they can say it's not and reject monetization. And fighting back is pretty much a futile effort. You can do it, but it's worthless. It takes a lot of time, it's not worth it. Uh, and truthfully, if your video goes viral and it's locked up in monetization for the first month that it's out there, you're gonna miss out on a hunk of cash if you do indeed go the monetizing route. So just leave it alone. Anyway, some awesome resources that I have found for finding royalty-free music, which royalty-free means that you can use it in your videos if you provide credit. Now you've gotta watch out because some royalty-free music is royalty-free, but you still need to buy it and license it. Others are royalty-free and they are licensed under the Creative Commons um, license, which means you know if you can use it maybe sometimes for um, non-commercial uses. If you're if you're monetizing your video though, that's a commercial use. It has to be licensed for commercial use, royalty-free. So there's some resources. Okay, uh, in Competech.com, uh, all that music is by Kevin uh, McLeod or MacLeod or whatever. But he is awesome. Now, also, there's a YouTuber named Technoax that does royalty-free tunes that are top-notch. Uh, and last but not least, YouTube recently released some creator tools so that you can use a big libra library of royalty-free music. Um, make sure to check the description for all those links. Just keep in mind, royalty-free music is, sadly, and naturally, mostly crap. And when something good does come along, tons of people are already going to be using it. And remember, even if it says royalty free, you have to copy and paste the license into the description of your video and make sure that it's available not just for free usage, but for commercial free usage if you plan on monetizing the video. Uh, truthfully, it's just to best to leave that stuff alone. And by the stuff, I mean music. It is a huge pain. Find a good track for your intro, get that license, and leave music out of the rest of your videos. It's very rare that music is absolutely necessary. And remember that people aren't watching your videos for the music, just something else. Funny enough, my music videos that, that are called proto vlogs, I work ridiculously hard to edit and produce these things. They rarely get more views than my standard vlogs. Here's the reason why. People want topics, not music videos. They could, they could listen to a lyric video if they wanted to. So even if you spend hours and hours editing and putting your best footage into your music videos, that, you know, it may not pan out. It, it may not be worth it to you. Um, sure, I like making music videos just because it's fun. Um, they get me pumped up, but they don't do well because there's not a searchable topic that people can find. They might get shared, they might go viral. Um, but it's usually just better time spent to cover a searchable topic really well. That's a more consistent seller, if you will. Uh, also, if you decide to use music when you're vlogging, like when you're actually talking in your vlog, and the music has lyrics in it, it makes it really hard to hear. So just adjust those levels when you're editing, and uh, if, you're, if you're vlogging, then uh, instrumentals are really good for vlogging. So you may also want to consider doing a voiceover. Um, some people don't like that idea because it's not off the top of your head while you're writing. However, I think they're a breath of fresh air. Uh, voiceovers can be great, especially if you just kind of are out there getting footage. You can come back home, pick out the very best bits of footage, and kind of do like a travel log. It's really nice. I, I really like videos like that. Um, if you do a voiceover like this one, uh, go ahead and write out a script or at least have a game plan that you're going to follow so you don't spend hours and hours editing sound clips of your umming and aahing, you know. Uh, also remember to use a quality mic on your computer. In fact, I have used the ATR3350, which is the same mic that I motovlog with to pick up audio uh, for my computer, and then I have to clean it up a bit in post. Since I started a new education channel and a super secret vlogging channel about how ridiculous special education and public education in the general has become, I have since upgraded to an awesome and pretty budget-friendly cardoid mic called a CAD or CAD U37. Uh, I am using that right now and I think it sounds incredible. So also, with a good mic for voiceovers, vlogs, and motovlogs, you, you won't have to spend time cleaning it up in post. 
Again, think of what you get paid per hour and then what your time is worth to go through and fix audio and post. It's probably worth it to upgrade the equipment if you're going to take this seriously. Even if it's just amateur equipment, go with the stuff that's been tried and true to be successful by moto vloggers like Ride Victoria and Accident Broadcast and uh, Moto Trippin' and me and stuff like that. Anyway, if you do voiceovers, just make sure that the background noises are at a minimum and the mic isn't too close to your mouth. Lots and lots of pops and heavy breathing can make your voiceover sound like a Darth Vader audition, but you're not James Earl Jones or the whiny long-haired kid from the prequels, so it's not gonna work. Um, other than that, I've had a few people ask how to record audio for a dual vlog. Now, I just barely released a video on how to do that, but you can find the link to that video once again in the description. A wealth of knowledge down there. So, so you guys, that is it for audio. Thank you so much for sticking around for the whole thing. That helps the analytics side of things, and I will get to that later. Uh, I hope that the video overlay with the trail in the background has been an interesting rip through the desert. I'm recording other rides to, uh, to do voiceovers for this series. They should be excellent. So thanks again for watching, and if you have any questions at all, make sure to leave a comment. And guys, I can't tell you enough. If this has helped you in any way, shape, or form, please let me know by clicking that subscribe button. And if you're not already a super subscriber, then I'd love to have you click that gear button next to the subscribe button and opt to receive emails when I upload. I know it's a big deal, but when you do this, the universe will grant you supernatural powers. Or actually, you know, YouTube will just grant you an email every time I upload, which is pretty much the same thing. Happy audio endeavors from my catch and yours. Paula Dean out.